Hi everyone, in today's screencast I'm going to show you how to track the limited log file changes. In our case we're going to show you how to track an IIS log file. We're using that as an example, but you have the ability to monitor other log files as well in Event Sentry. The first thing you'll want to do is make sure that you have logging enabled for your IIS site. So we'll go to our IIS site. Once you've navigated to your website, you can see the option for logging under IIS. And here you can see the file directory path for the log file, and also the format which we'll leave as W3C. You have the ability to select other fields which we'll get to in another screencast. You also have the ability to schedule the log file to be reported daily, hourly, weekly, or monthly. Once you've enabled logging, you'll want to hit apply to save it. Now you're going to want to open up your Event Sentry Management Console and head to Packages, Log Files, and right-click on Log Files and select Define Files and File Types. This is a Windows 2008 server, so we know it's running IIS 7. And here we can see we have an IIS 7 Log Files template already in place. You have the ability to change the name, and then also we know that this log file is delimited by spaces, so we're going to want to make sure that non-delimited is unchecked and also we're going to want to select IIS 7 from the drop down menu. Our line separator will leave as Windows. We would change this to Unix if we were importing a log file coming from a Unix based system. And here you can see the path is already set up pointing to the destination of the log file. You also have the ability to add any notes you see fit. Now Eventsentry comes with an IIS log file definition item already in place for you. If you double click it, you can see that you have the option to rename it set the field delimiter, in our case it's a space, and you have the ability to ignore characters as you see fit from the log file. The log file template is already in place for the items that are typically monitored in the log file by default. Now under log files we're going to want to head to our IIS Windows 2008 package and select the IIS 7 monitoring item. Here we can see that we have a database consolidation tab and we want to make sure that it's writing to our primary database so it shows up in the web reports. We also have the option to include all of the lines of the log that are written to the database or set it to exclude so we only include the lines that we define here in the box below. We can see the default file path for the IIS 7 log file and also an area to add notes. On the next tab we have event log alerts here you have the ability to log information from the log file to the application event log and event sentry. You can log it as a warning, information, or an error. For most people, you will not want to include all of the information from the log written to your event log. So if you hit exclude, you then have the option to add any information that you would see fit that you would like to log to your application event log. In my case, I've included a 404 wildcard, so I know that I'll be including any page not found messages written to my application event log. I've set up the wildcard to include a space before and after the 404 in between the two star symbols. This is because if you do not include those spaces, the 404 can match for a wildcard of byte sizes that include 404 in the total byte size. So as long as we have a space in between the star and the numbers on both ends, we're specifically just looking for 404 by itself and we're making sure that we're including that written to our application event log. Now you're going to want to save and push the configuration to the machines that you are monitoring the IIS log file on. Now we're going to visit our IIS site, which in our case is just localhost. And if we refresh the page a few times, we'll generate new log data. And also I'm going to visit a forward slash test site, which doesn't exist, so we come up with a 404 error. I'm going to refresh this 404 error a few times, and now we should have plenty of new information written to our log file. Now with IIS, the log files are not updated in real time, but instead they rely on a log buffer, which is periodically written to disk. This can cause a delay in your notifications if an error is encountered by somebody visiting your site. Our team member, Erica, has created a handy PowerShell script that will flush the cached log entries more frequently by updating the modification time of the log file. This will cause the new log information to show up in your database and therefore your web reports. We will include this script below the video so you can implement it for your own IIS logging. 
Please note that you will have to schedule this script to run with the Event Sentry Application Scheduler or the Windows Task Scheduler. We typically see our customers schedule the script to run every minute, but you can adjust the interval based on your needs. Also, keep in mind that this script is not required for monitoring IIS log files, but you can use it while testing to ensure the log gets flushed, or it's handy to use for sites that have very little traffic. So now I will run this script in PowerShell, and then I will head to the web reports, and under Logs, Delimited Log File, and now you can see the changes made to the log, which are my visits made to the site by refreshing the page, and also by visiting an unexisting site, which generated a 404 protocol status. You also have the ability to look at a detailed version of the reporting for the log. Here you see the various fields that you are automatically set up to monitor using that IIS 7 default definition file. If we wanted to search specifically for the 404 missing page errors generated, we could do a search for protocol status 404. And now you can see all the 404 errors generated and what site I attempted to access, in this case forward slash test, which did not exist. You also have the ability to save this information as a report. So we could call it 404 errors, page not found. And then you can create a job, which is a recurring version of this report, which will run automatically. And you can set it up to send to any email address in the format of a PDF, CSV, or HTML. You can also tell it to not send empty reports if there are no corresponding fields that have shown up for that report search. And you can set the frequency of the job to an interval of your choosing. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on setting up IIS log file tracking in Event Sentry, and we'll see you next time.